Hey guys, just before getting into this video, I wanted to mention that I did film this video um, kind of a different style. So in this video, I actually talk about what I'm going to do or what has to be done. And then I actually uh, do it off camera so I don't film it. And then I come back and I explained uh, what I did and what the next step is. So what I want to know is what you guys prefer. So do you prefer me... Uh, explaining what I'm gonna do, doing it off camera, and then coming back and explaining the next step? Or do you guys actually want to see me do the work so I can explain what I'm doing and then film myself doing the work and either do a time lapse of it or just play it back in real time? Either way, so I want to know uh, what you guys want to see. And another thing I want to know is how you guys feel about the music in the background. So I put subtle music in the background of all the videos so far, but I want to know what you guys prefer. Do you like the music or should I dish the music and not have anything or only have music in certain certain sections of the video? So anyways, let me know what you guys want. Uh, in the end, I want you guys to enjoy the videos. So if you guys want to actually see me do the work on the car, let me know and I'll switch back to doing that in future videos. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Back in the garage, working on the cabbie. Today, in this video, um, we're gonna be removing the steering rack. So, that's the steering rack here. Well, that's the boot. Goes in behind here. That's the other boot for the other tie rod. And this is where the steel, uh, steering column comes in. So we'll be removing all that. Uh, that's because this is a power steering rack. I'm gonna be putting in a manual steering rack because my power steering pump never worked. So might as well just go with manual steering, I think. And it's gonna clean up the engine bay. I don't need um, these power steering lines. I don't need the power steering reservoir anymore. So we're gonna remove all that. Um, before we do that though, I have to remove uh, the rest of the exhaust right here. So if we take a look under the car, you can see uh, right where the light is shining, that's the catalytic converter. And right here where there's that clamp, uh, I have to unbolt that and then the whole cat and downpipe or yeah, whatever you want to call it, downpipe should come out. And then yeah, there's just one hanger, one exhaust hanger right here. So I'm gonna remove these two bolts um, and then we'll pull the exhaust out. It's gonna give us quite a bit more room to work in front. Okay, so the exhaust is out. Now, uh, on manual cars, uh, the bracket for the shift linkage, uh, this is actually attached to the steering rack. And underneath, there's a main shaft that runs uh, from the actual shifter to here. Uh, there's a sort of bracket with a bearing that's also attached to, uh, to the steering rack. So we have to remove all that, uh, remove the shift linkage out of here before we can actually uh, remove the rest. So you can actually see under the car, um, you see this shaft uh, that is going, there's no room here. So this shaft goes into this bearing that connects to the shift linkage. This here, there's uh, two, yeah, two bolts. This has to come out, and then the whole shaft is gonna be able to be taken out over here. Wow, there's not much room. Um, probably gonna have to disconnect this end as well. This bearing is probably gonna get replaced because uh, this slides back and forth. As this gets used up, this one's not terrible, but I'm gonna be replacing all the linkage anyway. So I'm gonna replace that. So it's a good time to take it off anyways. Um, so essentially this is gonna come off the shaft. I'm just gonna let it hang on the sway bar and then I'll be able to slide the bearing off. And then when the new one comes in, slide the bearing in, bolt it back up and then bolt everything back to the steering rack. So yeah, all here. Here's another bolt that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to remove. I can do that from the engine bay. Right now, I'm just gonna remove these two. Okay, so I actually took 
uh, the entire rod out. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, like I said, there was just the two two bolts in this bracket with the men with the main bearing, and then on the actual shifter assembly under the car, there's just one bolt that goes through uh, with a nut on the end. Uh, this to remove. Uh, it's pretty good to have ratcheting wrenches because there's not quite enough room to get a socket in. So yeah, essentially I took it out because, uh, like I said, I'll be changing this bearing. So I'm gonna have to just remove this nut so I can slide the bearing out. And then while I'm here, I'm just gonna make sure that uh, this surface here is all nice and smooth to so it doesn't damage the other bearing. It doesn't cause premature wear, essentially. Uh, so I'll sand it down, make sure it's all nice and smooth. Slip the new bearing over and then it's gonna go back. So now this bracket has to come off. I suppose you could take the steering rack off and then take this off when it's out of the car. I'm gonna do it now just because I think it may be easier to uh, remove the steering rack if this is out of the way. So from what I can see, uh, there's a nut or bolt on this side. I'm not sure, it seems like a nut. And I think there's another one right under here. Okay, so the bracket for the shift linkage went right here. That's out of the way. So the entire shift linkage is out and the exhaust is out. So now the next thing I think I'm gonna do is I actually have to remove the uh, tie rods. So um, there's just a nut under here gonna remove that and then I'm gonna try to pull back the boot and see if I can remove the tie rod from the steering rack to make it easier to take it out. All right, so tie rods are out on both sides. Uh, went in here this one was a pain i had to torch it out and then uh, hammer the bottom to get it out when you're torching stuff like this uh, especially here there's the rubber caught on fire make sure you have a fire extinguisher make sure you're well ventilated uh, i open the garage door this is the tie rod that was on the other side uh, so this end just threads into the um, into the rack and then here you have your like this this is your inner tie rod this is your outer tie rod and here this threads in that's how you adjust your alignment so a good tip uh, when you remove tie rods and you're replacing them keep the original when you go to put the new one in get the length as close as you can and then at least you're gonna be close on your alignment you'll still have to get it aligned but uh, you should be close and you'll just be able to drive it to the alignment shop or whatever. This tie rod on that side is out. This one, I can't really get a spanner wrench in here. So what I'm just gonna leave it and then when I remove it, I'll just be able to slide it out this way. So that should be fine. Now, holding the actual rack, there's four bolts. One here, one on the bottom, another here, another on the bottom. That's it, and then there's two bushings. Uh, there's also where uh, the actual steering column comes in. I'm gonna remove that before I remove these bolts. So we'll remove that, we'll remove the boot, and then basically just remove these bolts and the whole thing should slide right up. So I peeled back the boot just to show you. Um, this is the bolt that has to come out. There's a nut on the backside. And this essentially goes onto a sort of spline. It has grooves all the way around. This connects and then when you turn your wheel turns the column, this turns the rack, and then there's like a sort of pinion gear here, and it moves the rack back and forth. So yeah, that's the bolt I wanna remove. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, you may damage your boot, I don't really care. I'm gonna be replacing the boot anyways. It's probably a good idea. So, but I guess if you wanna keep your boot, just be careful when you're uh, peeling this back. So let's remove this, and then we'll be able to remove all this, and out she goes. So after you remove the four nuts on these, whole rack slides off those studs, and then you have to just 
uh, tap it down or push it down out of here and the whole thing comes out. You can see this is where it actually goes in the steering column. And all the hoses came out with it. Tire rod also came out with it. I'm gonna keep this again so I can match the size when I put it back together. So there you have it. That's how you remove a steering rack. So thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Like I said, off camera, I'm gonna go ahead, clean the whole uh, engine bay before we put anything back in. And then I'm gonna be making another video uh, when I put the new steering rack in. The new steering rack is a manual steering rack. So uh, no more power steering. So all the hoses are gone. Power steering reservoir is gone. Uh, power steering pump on the engine is gone. So yeah, it should be a similar process. Well, it's the same process, but reverse to put it back in, but I'm still gonna film it. Show you guys how to do that. Um, it's gonna be new bushings as well. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.